It's time to make a start on part 3 of this lovely barn owl painting. And today we'll start by adding more detail to the face, we will build up those brown feathers around the face, and I'll even show you how to use watercolour white to add those very fine highlights. Now if you didn't miss the previous parts of this video, you find all of the links in the description down below. So let me show you again how to paint realistic birds in watercolour, and let's get them bushes wet. Right, so we're going to be working on trying to get the shape, the form around the side of the necks and the chest area. Trying to get some detail, like we've done on the face here, which looks OTT, but it's not. Right, okay. So, what I'm going to work on, I'm going to get my bluey black colour again, which is what we've been working on for the face all along. Which is, let's have a quick look, that one there, I just need a little bit more in there now, so it's getting a bit thin. So get my pipette or pipette, whatever you want to call it. Chop a little bit of water in there, so it's nice and watery, a little bit more. And I think I'll just add just a little bit of touch of yellow ochre, all right, in there as well. Just a little bit of yellow ochre, okay. So what you're going to end up with there, I'll just get my test paper going for you, is going to be like a grey browny colour but more on the grey, more on the kind of blue side of the brown if you know what I mean. Not too browny, more bluey than brown but a little bit of brown hint in there. That's what we've ended up with. So a little bit similar to what we had on the face and let's get stuck in. Okay so I'm looking at again the shape of the head, the side of the head and again, we need the darks to show the light, so we need to get this detail in there, really. So kind of working that up a little bit to the, towards the top, not all the way, because we've got some darker colours going in there in a bit, probably to about here, because that's going to be like yellow ochre raw sienna <laughs> uh, kind of colours uh, as we go along. Right, so kind of building that up as we go along. Do, do, do. And the same further down. Now I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit more yellow ochre to this as well because it's a little bit too blue to, as it's coming down because further down on the photo this gets a little bit more kind of yellowy, ochre browny orange, well browny colour sort of thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit of a bit more yellow ochre now to the mix. So this is that same mix just to kind of tone it a little bit more. It's an unusual looking colour I know. But again, we need this underneath. So, tiny marks on the paper, just barely touching the paper. So let's get this slightly higher up. The paper as well. Kind of mix it in into the grey blue we've already got up there. So it's a gradual kind of change from one to the other that way. And again, we'll be blending this back a little bit in a bit. So all I'm doing with this one, as I keep saying, just looking at the angles that these are going in. And looking at the picture. Again, if you want to, you can do what we did before. Make some little marks here and there. So if I just zoom out a little bit, so you can see what I'm doing again. Where have I gone? There. And I think it's a little bit bluer down there as well. You tend to find within white, there's a lot of blues in white. So I'm just going to go, let's get my palette a minute. All I've done, I've got the same colour here which we use for the side of the face. Just nick a little bit of blue, pop that into there. And what I'm going to do with that one, just bring that over the pot, I'm going to put a couple of drops of water in there, just to water it down, so it's not too dark, not too thick. So I'm going to put that on my brush. And tap it once, and then they did it then. So that's a little bit bluer in there. Kind of vary the um, the flavour a little bit in places as you go around. Okay. Yeah, there's a bit of a crease here on the photo you see as well. Obviously, where the head turns, it's a little bit of crease just around there. Probably this area here. So slightly lighter there as it goes around. And so I want to kind of maintain that really, so I'm going to put a few lines through it, but not many. 
and then close the lines below like we did around the top of the eyes just so we can suggest that there's some shape there when you look at the way it curves around in places that's what you want to look at the most really I'm switching back and forth between the bluey uh, colour, bluey black with the yellow ochre in and the more bluer version of the mix so I've got the two mixes on the go right so I'm just looking at the shapes again I know we've got some lighter areas in here I realise that but we need to get this dark in so so important so we just have this underlying layer of colour in there as well you can see how kind of fine some of these brush strokes are I just gone off camera there I just realised that so bear with me um, you can see how fine some of these brush strokes are on there which they are this is using that uh, kind of yellow ochre yellow ochre version of the black and blue at the moment just keep them nice and tight and close together so I'm just building up the details as I go along so again lots and lots of little tiny lines going to add a little bit of blue into the mix at the same time here and there there's a little bit of bluey grey colour going in there now which is a facial colour just a few here and there this, um, this section here is actually part of the wings that needs to be darker and working our way down and then once we've done this bit we'll start working our way around and then we'll soften it all back I'm going to get a little bit of yellow ochre a fairly weak wash of yellow ochre and just put a just a suggestion of colour down here just a little bit that's better just as we come down again this will be covered with the white but we want it to show through that little bit so we have to go a bit harsh with it initially just a little bit stronger than we need to think we need to go but you'll be surprised how much it gets covered when we do the white over the top so just a little bit that's all the point in there not much and a few here and there that's plenty and we need to come around the other side while well, I've got that kind of on the uh, on the palette again the one I'm using is this one here it's a kind of watery wash version that's all it is of yellow ochre just so you know what I'm doing um, and again whilst we've got it on the brush we'll switch black back to the kind of blacky grey blues <laughs> kind of colours in a bit just kind of get this in this side now when you start to see all these lighter details going on even though it's just a basic layer you know you can start to see it coming together a bit more now so I'm building up as I go gradually I know it's a lot lighter on this side of the head but I'm just looking at the shapes we need that dark colour in there again not as much though, we don't need quite as much dark in here. We know we've got some details in here because I've got a pencil mark there which I need to cover and hide because I can't have that showing through. Can't have that showing through. <laughs> um, and kind of just look at the curve, see how this is curving that way. I'm over exaggerating again, I know. It's kind of curving this way as I go around. Barely touching the paper. Just lightly skimming it with this uh, double zero brush. A little bit more. That's a stronger mix, uh, slightly stronger from the corner of the mixing palette. <laughs> but it doesn't matter, as long as it works. Now I'm going to go into the yellow ochre. Let's have a quick look. Is this one here. Get a little bit of water in there. I can always nick a little bit more out of there a lot. And I'm going to touch in just a little bit of dark in there, okay? That's all I'm doing. So yellow ochre, a bit of dark, which will give us this kind of colour here. Alright. So it's a bit of a yellow ochre-y, bluey colour, but it's more on the yellow ochre side, if you know what I mean. So that's going to start popping into this side here now. Just slightly pull that in. So what we're going to use this time around, we're going to use three different colours, okay? So we're going to use yellow ochre, Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna. So Yellow Ochre, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna. 
Can make a nice little tune going on there. So I think what I'm going to start with, I've got a little bit of dirty water there, or mucky water. So I'm going to put that into the mucky water, <laughs> into the dirty water. Just so we've got a wheat wash of this yellow ochre. There's a little bit of kind of uh, bluey brown in there. Uh, blue, yeah, a bit of bluey brown in there as well, but it doesn't really matter. We just need a kind of light wash to begin with, just so we can start working on some of these little details here. So let's start off with the edge of the head. Start getting a few little details on there. Okay. Scribble it around. Don't try and keep it all in, kind of fill it in completely. Just a little bit here and there. That's all I'm doing. So back to the same colour again as we go. I might as well work around the top of the head initially. This will do for the, the base colour on there. Scribble it around. So I'm just kind of tapping this in, leaving gaps in between. That's all I'm doing. Nothing, nothing flash or anything like that. And I'm going to do the same again around this side of the head. So when you look at the photograph again, hopefully I'll be able to bring it into this corner here for you. You can see some of the areas which I'm kind of leaving, just a few gaps here and there for, where we can show a stronger colour inside. Just tapping it around, getting some colour in there initially. And we'll kind of feather out this edge here eventually as well. Just get some colour. A little bit more in there. Just a little bit of colour as we go around. And I'm just looking to see how far down the side of the face this goes. And kind of in line, a little bit lower than the eye, probably about to about here. So probably about to there, I think, is where it comes down to. Then it starts to change to that kind of bluey grey colour, really. Just to kind of tint the paper. We'll do the same on this piece. Da -da -da -da. A few little marks in there. Little scribble marks, that's all I'm making. Leaving gaps in between. Try not to go into this area if you can help it. This just gives us something to work on top of, that's all it's for. So we've got a means of kind of getting a bit more detail on the top of that. A bit watery in there, a bit of a bubble going on there. So again, this area I'm just kind of looking at where these creases are at the moment and just getting a few kind of rough marks where there's some creases within that side of the um, the top of the head. Again, look at the reference photo and you see what I mean by that. Okay, that'll do for, for scrubbing the first basic layer. Now we're going to go for the yellow ochre again. We're going to go for the thicker mix now. So this is a bit more of a, still watery, between watery and creamy. Okay, so it still can drip off your brush if you give it a good old shake. And we're going to work with that one. Let's rub my hand a minute, sorry about the noise. Going to, going to work with that one around the back of the head and working our way gradually up just by little squiggle marks. I'm not trying to fill everything in. Right, so scribbling this as we go along, just little circles, little scribbles, not filling it completely in. You don't want to fill it in. You're going to leave some marks in between. So that way it kind of adds a little bit of texture to it as well. Okay, and again, around here, a few scribble marks. These are going to kind of uphill a little bit in that direction, some of these. So kind of bear that in mind when you come to this section. Okay, all these little areas here will get blended out with the white paint a little bit as well as we go along. I think I'll put a few more up there, and again, I think that comes to there, and a few more knocking about, a bit of a, a couple of feather areas there as well. So this is just simply yellow ochre on its own. Okay, a bit more down that way as we go down, just a few taps here and there. And we'll work on this bit next. Right, so that's the first layer of that one. So, well, second layer if you wish. Now what I'm going to do is bring this back in. I'm going to get some of this yellow ochre. So yellow ochre, and this is the raw sienna, the burnt sienna, sorry. I'm losing my brain. This is the burnt sienna and yellow ochre. And I'm going to mix a little bit together, just get a bit more in there. So this is just going to change the flavour of this yellow ochre a little bit more. Okay, so it's going to be more on, a little bit more I think actually on there. 
a bit more kind of yellow ochre on this yeah about that that so the color which you're looking for now is this okay so this is the color I'm going to darken it slightly so you can see it all right so that's what we're looking for for another layer of color over the top so we'll do that bit next let's let that dry just for a minute or two and we'll come back to that so let's cover the face up <laughs> poor little thing we'll just start getting some details in here now just by barely touching the paper just a few lines looking at the shape of the feathers go tiny tiny lines is what we're looking at these will get dark as we go along by adding a little bit of burnt somber to this in a bit so a few lines and trying to stop the light shining too bright for you so I'll try and do it this way around on a stretch um, so again these tend to come in like little kind of curve areas like that so a little curve area but these are obviously feathers so we've got to make sure that the edges are quite broken now the marks go sideways on this bit now just a little bit sideways so now we've got to work on these lines here just gradually building up as we're going along I mean all the little kind of white marks and black dots and stuff like that will be added as we go as we get to the darker layers. Remember we're starting from light and working our way to dark as we go along. That's the idea behind this, just to kind of build up as we go. And we know that goes into there. Just make sure there's nowhere else. I'm just checking around as I'm going here. So we've got a bit of an outer edge here. I mean this heart shape actually goes out further, which is to here really. And there's another area here where it stops. It's like a two, two or even three layers of, uh, of kind of heart, if you wish, as you go around there. So it's, you know, when you, the more you study something, the more that you tend to see. Okay. So that's that. Right, so that's the next layer on there. So that's effectively, what, three layers of paint we've done on there so far? So that's the brush washed out. The next bit I want to do is work on the next layer, which will be adding a little bit of brown to that same mix, just kind of darken it down a little bit more, okay? So we'll do that next. Right, so let's get stuck in. So I'm going to work on this now and try and get some more detail in here now as we go along. So little tiny marks, keep looking back and forth at the reference photo as we go along. Shall I zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing? So... Uh, <laughs> And remember we've got these areas which kind of curl over in places, so we need to kind of start picking those out now we're going to slightly darker colours. So start picking them out. Mad. This gets quite light down here I noticed as well in these areas. So we're kind of looking at these little curls which are starting to form there now as you can see. This is now getting darker in behind there which is looking start to get the form and the shapes going here. Oh, I'm getting excited now, can you tell? When you start seeing things come alive and start to see, to see the shapes forming and you know the bird itself looking a bit more realistic, that's when I start getting a big buzz. Okay, so I'm looking at them little kind of curvy areas. Remember we've got another layer to go on top of this, yeah. So let's do these two kind of brows, if you wish, these top areas first. Then we can work on the, the very top of the head as we go along. Barely touching the paper, same colour. Not change the, the colour yet. Barely touching. And the same thing will apply again. There's some feathers coming out the front here, but we can add those in with the white thereafter. These are curling over a little bit. You can see I've not got a lot of paint on the brush, I don't want it blobbing off the brush. So when I when I put the paint in the palette, I'm trying to get the little curly areas now, that's time to show on this area now. When I put the paint in the palette, what I tend to do is, I mean that's that's completely loading the brush up, which you don't want to do. I'll run it around and twist it in my fingers, so I end up with a point, okay? So there's not, there's not a lot of paint on there now. 
and occasionally what I'll do, I'll, as I mentioned before, I'll tap it on my kitchen roll which I've got below my mixing palette there just to make sure there's not too much on the brush otherwise you'll end up blobbing it on there and we don't want a blobby paint so try not to overload your brush, it's best to have too little and too much, okay? right, okay, so that's probably nearly enough for this area now Trying to completely cover all the light areas here, so you've got to be careful not to do too much. A few tiny areas in there as well, and on the very edge. And then let's work towards the top of the head now. So again, that goes that way, that goes that way, and then the more that's straight in the middle. You can always make reference marks to begin with, like we did around the side of the face, if you remember, and the neck. Just so you know where you're going to go, just look at, just make a few marks here and there, for the same colour. So then it changes direction there in the middle, and it starts to work its way over that way as well. Then. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is switch to the darker colour, which is da -da -da, that one there. Now that darker colour is a creamy consistency, quite creamy there. It's it's not too thick that we can't paint with, but it's creamy. So it's fairly, fairly thick. A bit like double cream, if you wish. So again, I'm looking for the shapes of the feathers that's on this section of the head. Just put a few in, not too many of this, because it's quite a dark colour. You don't want to over, overdo it. It's a bit, a bit of an overkill if you put too much of this in. Just got to show the um, the darker marks as well in a bit. And we can't do that if you've already got too much of this in. Just a little bit more. Again, you don't want to overdo it. There will be white in there. We're using a lot of white, as I said, on this particular bird. Because that's what it is. It is white. Well, ish. But you know what I mean. It's, it's quite, a, quite a white, light colour, this one. Okay, on this side, I'm just going to put some details in here. So you've got little tiny spots here and there. Using the same colour. It's not black around here. It's um, quite, quite dark, like a dark brownie. Kind of dead browny black, if you wish. You know that's that's what it's like, more or less. So a few little spots around there. We're going to tap in, and a few as we go up and down the side here, and a few around there. We don't want to outline things, remember? So no outlining, please. Thank you very much. And. We've got a few around here as well. We can reinforce these marks if need be, just to kind of make them stand out that little bit more, just by using black on its own if need be on that one. Again, we're putting a little bit of white in here, as I keep saying. More white, yes, more white. For this particular bird need lots of it. And start tapping in some of the darker marks using the same brownie black colour on the top of the head. Don't make them too big or too many. There's quite a few there, but some are quite pale, so we'll have to tone them back a little bit. We've got a few knocking about around here. One or two around there. Just by popping them in. And then again around the side and to here. Okay. I think initially that'll do. What I'm gonna do now, as per usual, I'm gonna soften it down a little bit. And then we can fine tune it. Probably just around this edge here. I might do that first actually. Just using this darker colour. I don't want to outline things, remember, but we need to kind of determine where things are. And we can put a line there. I'm not outlining, honestly. Put a line there, and then what we'll do, we'll soften it down, okay? Just soften that little line down. Just so we've got a change in white to dark. That's all I'm doing with this. So it's not outlined as such, it's softened down. Okay, so now that's kind of separated that area. 
Right, let's just get another a larger brush now. Let's go back to the size six. Okay, so the size six brush, and very lightly, barely touching the paper. I'll stress the word barely touching the paper. Just go around over the top of the detail. The dark colour will smudge quite easily, so be careful with that. Barely touching the paper. You could go in the direction that the feathers go, but it's not easy on the small areas, so I'm just going over the top. Just by touching. Just to soften it down. So the blacky blue colour again, which is the uh, French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber. And we're going to put some of these spots in now. So around there, it's a bit dark, but that doesn't matter. We can lighten that a little bit with some watercolour, or we can dab it with a bit of water. Just a few spots, just seeing where they go roughly. They don't have to be precise on this, obviously. It's all going to vary with every single barn owl that you see. They'll all vary. So you don't have to worry too much about getting these spots on. Ah, that wasn't meant to be a pun, sorry about that. <laughs> it's a lighter version now, just kind of weaken the wash down a little bit in places. You can do that any way you want. Soften it down, weaken it. Because they're not that dark, these spots, anyway, not, not on this side. These are kind of quite grey kind of look in spotty areas. And a few odd ones I noticed around here as well. That's fading in quite nicely actually. I'm just going to darken the bottom of some of these spots so they do vary slightly in, in colour. Just a slightly darker patch on that one. Okay. And a few more around here. This is a bit of a more watery wash of the bluey the bluey grey colour we've got, so bluey black sorry. Don't make them too symmetrical, keep them all different. Different shapes, different sizes, and not too many, okay? Not too many. I mean that's more than enough there. Probably too many. I'll put one more in. <laughs> right, we'll let that dry and we'll just see if there's any fine tuning we need to do. And then we're probably going to go in with the white. Yay! Right, so see you in a minute. Hi, my name is Paul Hopkinson. So what I do, I show you my technique on how to paint wildlife in watercolour. We go through a variety of subjects from dogs, cats, insects and even botanical subjects as well. And I'll guide you through this right from the beginning all the way through to the end for those final brushstrokes. You'll also find that with most of my videos, you also get the outline drawing and that reference photograph as well. Every month we produce a PDF version, so a typed out version with photographs of that monthly main video. You'll get the PDFs for the months that you are a member. Now this is a very in-depth document with lots and lots of pages of information and instruction, as well as obviously the photographs as well. Now another benefit is that you get access as well to my private Facebook group. Now the good thing about my videos is that they'll be here 24-7. So you can watch them six months down the line, two years down the line, it doesn't really matter. They'll always be there, you can stop, you can play, you can rewind, you can pause as many times as you want to do so. So that will give us some ideas on what you'll gain from being a member on my Patreon channel. Right, it's time for the white paint as I said earlier. So the one I use is the SAA one, there's a variety of different ones out there. I'm going to squeeze a bit of this in there, you don't need too much, you'll be surprised how little you actually need. Okay, so I'm going to put some water in the corner of my my little ceramic palette here. I don't know what kind of palettes people use, there's a variety of palettes on the market as you can imagine from plastic to ceramic, um, all different types anyway. So all I'm going to do is mix this bit of water, not with all of the paint but just some of it. And I want to make this into like a creamy consistency. So put that to one side, let's get back to the painting Ta -da -da! and we'll get stuck into the white. Here we go. Hopefully, the video shouldn't bleach out while I'm doing this. Now you have to remember that this watercolour white does dry lighter. You need lots and lots of brush marks on here, but make sure you crisscross them over so they're not all in the same direction, like I said before, when we're putting the detail underneath. This is what will then start to bring the barn owl a bit more to life. 
as we do this, okay? So crisscross all the way through. So again, I'm doing very tiny brush marks, barely touching the paper here as I go. Barely touching the paper. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see a bit more of the detail going on here. Okay. I can't want to bring it down any lower than that for you, but that will give you some general idea on the amount of detail that's going into this and how much paint I've got on the brush. I've got a lot of paint on the brush. It takes a lot of doing this, so be prepared to relax for for a while, just putting some detail on there. And as I say, make sure you crisscross these lines over. So I've shown you on the test paper here. This is one of the test colors we did. So you've got watercolor white, and we're doing lines like this. Okay. But make sure you kind of crisscross them slightly. So you've got not like an X, but like a very narrow X. <laughs> okay, so like that. That's what we're looking at doing for, for these kind of um, feathers that we've got in there. So again, I'm just trying to layer this as we go. You can see it's starting to take effect already as I go along here. I'm trying not to go too high because it does kind of bloom out a little bit on the white when my hand goes up here sometimes. So when you're doing this, you want to finish the brush stroke out, okay? So lift off as you go up, but I'm going to do it the other way. So I'm keeping this watercolor white quite creamy as we go. Quite creamy. Okay, or well you can see the effect. When you go onto the darker areas like here, look, you can see how effective these this white is around here. Um, so it does make a big, big difference. So again, I'm following these brush strokes that's underneath more than anything. I'm not trying to completely cover them. I want them to show through, so don't cover every single section that you see. You want them close together, don't get me wrong. But you don't want to get your white paint and, and start going like this. Oh, look, I'll cover that up there. Okay, you want all these little lines so the detail on me shows through. Okay, hope that helps. Right, so again, I'm just looking at, we've got this dark hair underneath, but we want that to show through a little bit. Remember this kind of dark line here? So we'll keep it showing through. We don't want that to disappear on us. So again, I'm keeping the lines quite thin. Barely touching the paper, the paint is still quite creamy. I keep mixing a little bit of water in the palette with it. Just create those thin lines and roll the brush as I say in the paint. So you roll in the bristles to keep the line to, or to keep the tip of the brush quite sharp. It takes a, quite a few attempts. You're back and forward to the paint. I know. Cross them over. Do a bit of crisscrossing as we go along. bit brighter there. Okay. As I say, remember this will dry a lot lighter as we go. Much, much lighter. So, tiny, tiny marks. These are literally a quarter of an inch long. That's all I'm doing them. So they're very small. I'm going to wash the brush out again in a minute because, as I mentioned, it gets a bit clogged up in the metal if you're not careful. Which is why I store my brushes with the bristles pointing down. So, so far so good. You can see that this, the creation, you can see it's starting to shake now really well with the white on there. Uh, and the difference it's making, you compare this side to this side. Well, we haven't done down here yet either. All these little areas, all the top of the head. So it's really starting to come together a bit more. Right, around this area now. So I'm going to kind of do what we've done before. Work it gradually. Roll in the brush in the paint. So you've got a nice point each time. Do you remember all I'm doing with that one, just to kind of show you again. Just roll in the brush, in the white paint, that's all I'm doing. So I've got a point to kind of work with. Got to keep looking at the direction though, just, just don't go willy-nilly with it. You know, keep crossing over, especially this area, that these tend to cross over a bit wider apart. Not quite an X, kind of marks the spot, but they do... They do go a little bit wider. Saying this area down here is a little bit darker. That little pink hue go kind of shows through a little bit in there, as you can see, which is good. I'm constantly thinking about the direction that these these go, and we'll work along this ring as we go along. 
So we'll do probably do that ring next actually because we're kind of at that stage on the side of the face. Try and do two halves, one half at a time. Still got to do this area here, yeah. So where it's darker, that will show up even more so. Anyway. So again, just if you don't try and cover all these dark areas up along these kind of uh, curly bits, as I keep calling them. <laughs> bring the, the line out. So remember to finish outwards like that. Okay. So bring your line out as you go. You see this coming to life a bit more now, this painting, because we're getting this white on. This, when you get the contrasting colours on there, and the white is so contrasting compared to the detail underneath. Now you can see why we spent all that time getting all that detail underneath. So it shows through. We're not completely covering it, as I keep saying. We're not trying to cover all that detail up. We're just trying to get the white accents over the top, which will then bring it more to life, which is what we're trying to do. We need that feel of realism. Okay. So again, these are very tiny marks I'm putting on here. Because it's quite soft, don't forget, all this area. This, and I'm trying to finish the lines outwards. Just quite a soft area around here. So you need to kind of replicate that by keeping it gentle, keeping it soft. Barely touching the paper with the tip of the brush. And again, it's still that creamy consistency white. I've said before about watercolour white is that if you want to um, tone it down, you can. You can do it. You can, honestly. But very quickly. If when you watch the Robin tutorial, if you've, if you've had a go at that one yet, you see the uh, the chest area on the uh, the Robin. We do put a layer of colour over parts of the chest, but you have to do it in one swift movement. Because if you don't, the watercolour white will disappear on you or go muddy. Okay, so that's that bit. So now the next stage is we're just going to work our way up around here, around the beak. Remember where we put these reference marks, which now obviously are our grey marks as well, which is good. So we've got the reference marks where it comes around and then comes down. I think it's still fairly straightish around there, kind of horizontal. And then it starts to come downhill a little bit. So again, I'm constantly looking at the shapes and how things go. Right, so I'm looking at the direction that these go. Okay, so I don't want to put too much into this brownie area around here because there isn't a lot in there. And if we do put too much we can just tint it down a little bit if need be. So bring that around to here. Remember this side is a little bit darker than this side. So this side's going to be lighter so we'll put closer, the lines closer together on this side. But this side, we don't want them too close together because we need some of that grey to show through. Okay, so now we're going down towards the beak. A few lines around there. This is what tends to set the beak off, is when we get a few, few loose strands. I'm just going to get some thicker watercolour white here, so it's very light double cream. A few loose strands coming over. Bit more, just a few. Don't overdo it. Keep looking at your reference photo. I know how many times have I said it. Keep looking at your reference photo. I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight in there as well. Actually, I just noticed. I did say I'm going to put a little bit on the tip of the beak, which will blend in shortly. Okay, and a few more. This is what's going to go over those kind of nostril hole areas, if you know what I mean, because we don't want, we want them to be visible, but not completely. Because they do look a bit odd, I have to say. Right, well, that's not far from it. See, I think that'll probably about do it for those fine hairs on there. As I say, we don't want to kind of overdo it. Okay, wash the brush out, as you can hear. And what I want to do is just lightly, very lightly, tickle this, tickle, 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 and tickle that, tickle, 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 just a little bit. 
just to soften that down. Join me in part four where we'll continue to work on that lovely face and that will also include applying the remaining layers of the opaque white feathers. I'll see you there.